Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie and in this video, I'm going to show Disk Storage Data Structures, Storage Manager, Query Processor, and different types of database users. Now, the diagram that you see on your screen right now is a very famous diagram known as the Database System Architecture. And before I begin, I'd like to point out that uh, I've already created two videos before this, two, two video lectures before this, and those I'm going to link down below. They will help you to better understand today's video. So in case you haven't watched, please go ahead and click on those links. And also down in the description box, you will find uh, my lecture notes for these three videos. So in case you just want some reading material, then it's right there. And please go ahead and download that. And now I'm going to start this. So this is known as the database system architecture. And we are going to study that in detail because this explains to you everything you need to know about a database. So we'll begin with the uh, this particular part that says storage manager. So we'll start with what that does. It is first of all an interface between the low level data stored in the DB and the application programs. So whatever uh, applications use database, they always need to communicate with the database and the storage manager acts as a bridge between the two. It also interacts with the file system or file manager. So file manager is right here. Whatever you see in this cylindrical format, this is the file manager. And the storage manager interacts with this file manager. It can also store, retrieve, and update data that is present right now in the database. Now we are going to see what are different components of the storage manager. So as you can see, the first one we are going to study is the authorization and integrity manager. So what this basically does is provides authority to the users. Uh, it decides what kind of data should be accessed by which user. For example, if uh, if you were a person who was, who was trying to run a company, maybe you are the company's manager, then you'd have access to the details of all the employees. But if you were just an employee, you wouldn't have that access to the database where, uh, where information about all the employees is stored. So that is what a, a storage manager does. It, it provides that authority to different users to access different kinds of data. And it also manages integrity. So integrity stands for um, all kinds of uh, constraints uh, stand for all kinds of rules and regulations that um, that um, ensure that the database is always uh, following the integrity. And in order to do all those things, these rules are always defined by someone. And we're going to see who does that uh, later on in the video. The second thing present in the storage manager is a transaction manager. And if you haven't watched my first video, then please do it because there I have explained the problems uh, which are caused when you do not use a database. So one of those problems was um, con concurrency. And concurrency is when two people try to access the same thing at the same time and then try to modify it. So the transaction manager ensures that if such a thing happens, then even then, the consistency or the correctness of the database is maintained. Then you have the file manager, which is right here. The file manager uh, makes sure that the space is enough and that the data is given proper space and it is um, stored in the disk storage. And I'd like to tell you what disk storage is. So today in the market, if you go to buy a computer, it, it, it will say that this has got a one terabyte memory 
and it has got an 8 GB RAM. I'm not saying that all computers are having a one terabyte memory and 8 GB RAM, but it's just an example. So if you have a computer that says one terabyte memory, what that means is you can store that much data inside your computer of one terabyte. And if it says that it has an eight GB RAM, then that means you can access eight GB of your data and use it all at the same time simultaneously. And most of us don't really re uh, require that much of RAM because we never try to access eight GB of data at the same time, but uh, we still use a RAM with a larger capacity because it just improves the performance of your system overall. Uh, the number of processes that can run at the same time will increase because of the increased memory of RAM. And uh, 8 GB is nothing compared to 1 terabyte, but um, RAM is a lot costlier to build than your disk storage or your 1 terabyte disk memory. So which is why the disk storage is always larger and your main memory or RAM is always smaller. So the file manager is uh, managing data that is stored in your disk and not in your RAM, okay. Then you have the buffer manager. So buffer manager is again something that um, acts as a communication channel. The storage manager itself is a communication channel, but the main component inside of it which actually does this work is the buffer manager. So a buffer manager is basically a system that provides communication between this part, that is the part above the storage manager and the part below the storage manager, that is the disk. So in order for your system to function, you require that the data that is um, stored in the disk is brought to the main memory. So when I refer to the disk, remember it's that one terabyte memory. And when I refer to the main memory, it is that eight GB RAM that you have. So what happens is whenever you require data to work on, for example, if you're working on a, on a document, you are editing it, then at that time, that document is in your main memory. So it is brought from the disk to the main memory. And obviously the main memory is volatile. Volatile means it is there right now, but then it disappears anytime. So that is what main memory is. It, it can disappear anytime, uh, whenever you switch off your computer, for example. So this is what happens. And that, uh, that is why every file has to be brought to main memory in order for you to make changes to it. And once you save it and close it, it goes back written back in, it's written back into the disk. So this is what the buffer manager actually does for a database. The next thing we are seeing are some data structures that are handled by the storage manager. And you can see them here, right here, whatever you see in the cylindrical part. So what those data structures do, first of all, you have the data files. These will actually store the database. Then you have uh, the data dictionary. This is kind of uh, storing information about the data stored in the database. That is known as metadata. So whenever you have, um, it, it, it does basically the same kind of work that a normal dictionary does, you know, storing different definitions and all. So this is also storing a definition, but it is known as schema. And I've explained this in the first video that a schema is the overall design of the database. So it explains what information goes where and um, what kinds of tables are available in your database. And you also have indices and what indices do, they provide fast access to data items. And this also, again, I have explained in the first uh, two videos that databases come with indices and indices are a way to access the data very quickly. So that is what is present here. That is a data structure. Next, you have the data manipulation language. And this is a kind of a, a requirement if you want to understand what query processor right here does. 
So data manipulation language is used to retrieve information, fetch information. It is used to insert new information. It is used to delete something that you don't want. And it is used to modify what is already existing. So this is what uh, data manipulation language does. It is a language that is performing all these things if you want to. Then you have another language, which is data definition language. And this simply defines all the rules and regulations, which are known as constraints and assertions. So these are defined by the data definition language. And it also defines authorization. So like I said, the storage manager handles authorization. But this authorization needs to be written down in, in a set of instructions. And that is done by the data definition language. And now we are going to be ready to study the query processor components. And the first one is the DDL interpreter. What it does is it translates your definition language commands and records them in the data dictionary. So you have the data dictionary right here. And I said that what it does is it stores the schema of the database. And that schema or design is written using the DDL, that is the data definition language. So once that is uh, decided, it gets stored here in the data dictionary. Then you have the DML compiler, which is, uh, which is right here. So the DML compiler is, uh, again, it, it's going to translate, but it's going to translate a query language to low level instructions. Because you see, the computer does not understand English, and it does not understand any other language. It understands only this type of an object code which is created here. So that is why whatever you write using a, a language, any language, that has to be converted into something that the computer can understand, that the system can understand. So that is what a compiler does. It translates. And the compiler at the same time is going to make evaluation plans and performs also query optimization. So what that means is whenever you are asking for something, there are different ways of getting that thing from the disk. So you have to find all the different ways, but then you have to pick from there the best way, the way that brings you the data fastest and uh, the way in which you don't have to access a lot of areas of your memory in order to fetch the data. So that is called optimization. So it makes different plans and then also selects one that is the best from those. And then you have the query evaluation engine, which is right here. And this is the main part of your of your system. It's known as the heart of your database system because it actually implements whatever you are asking from out here. So whatever you ask, whatever questions you are asking, those questions are answered by the query evaluation engine because it, because it implements everything that, that you ask for, uh, that you ask to be implemented. Then you have the database users, which are up here whatever you see up here, they are database users, different types of users. The first ones are naive users, and naive is a French word that means people who are novices or um, very unsophisticated people who do not uh, necessarily know much about the field that they are in. So these are naive users, and they interact with your database system using an application program. So you can see right here that they use application interfaces. So in order to access the database, they do not know much about any language that has to be used, and uh, they do not know how the database is made. But they use it through a program or an application. So any application that you use on your phones and your computers uh, those applications are the ones that actually use a database behind the scenes, but you are not aware of it. So whenever you are using such applications, you don't really need to know how it's working and you don't need to know any programming or coding in order to access that data. 
So such users are naive users. Then you have application programmers. These are the ones who make those applications that naive users are using. So any kind of application, again, that you use in your phones, laptops, those applications are created by people known as application programmers. And they know a little bit about the database enough to create an application which uses a database. And then you have these sophisticated users who use these uh, DML queries in order to analyze the data. So they know a lot about the data and they know a lot about the database and they are specialized in using some query languages and these query languages actually help them to analyze the data and understand what the data actually means and find out some interesting uh, patterns and conclusions from the database. Then you have the database administrators. These are the main people, the boss, bosses, you know. So you have, uh, they have all the central control over the system and you cannot do anything in the database without their permission. And first of all, the first task that they do is define the schema. The schema, again, is the design of the database. So how the database looks and what can be stored and what cannot be stored, all those things are done by the database administrators. They decide everything. And they can also modify this schema and what you see here in the disk. They can modify all of it if required by the organization that they work for. And they also grant authorization. So whatever is happening here is controlled by the database administrators. They decide who gets access to what data. And they also perform periodic backups. So the, uh, one of the most important responsibilities of database administrators is to provide backups. Backups are basically done in order to store all the data somewhere else in a safe place so that if this data is original one is lost then you can always fetch that backed up data from somewhere and still continue to run your system and it they also ensure that there is enough free disk space available so when you are using a database you might be using a simple computer or you might have purchased some space through uh, like like using Dropbox or Google Drive. You might have paid and you know um, bought some space to store your data. And it's always necessary that as the data grows, you make sure that there is still enough space available to store more data and to continue the um, normal function of the database system. So all these things are done by the database administrators. So that's it for this video. And like I said, please uh, check the disc description box for more information. And I'll see you in the next video where we are going to start uh, other, other exciting topics. Thank you for watching.